Hello, I'm Christopher Coppola. I'm an associate professor of film at the San Francisco Art Institute, as well as the director of special cinema projects and studies. I am a professional filmmaker, have been since 1987, making numerous, numerous feature films and television, but also very much into new music and chants and improvisation. So I like to mix, mix uh, the artistic process in my own work. And I'm often called the Coppola that educates and entertains. And so having said this, I have two students. One is a current student of mine, Colette Standish, and a recent alum who is a student for several years of mine named Cy Long. Um, so why don't we start with this? Why don't uh, Colette being my current student, why don't you talk a little bit about yourself uh, and uh, you know what you've done before coming to the Art Institute and, and we'll start with you. So whenever you're ready, Colette, let me hear from you. Okay. Um, well, I'm Colette Standish. I am from uh, the UK, Manchester and London. I did my uh, BA at St. Martin's School of Art quite a few years ago. Um, and I've actually um, been um, a practicing artist for over 20 odd years and very advanced, very advanced practicing artist what might i say <laughs> yes yeah yeah and um i came to the uh, the us um 2010 and i was practicing uh, my work again here and then i um a few years ago i decided um that i wanted to go back to college and do my masters because i I didn't um, have chance to um, back in the UK, and uh, yeah, and here I am. Okay, let's we'll discuss a little bit more about your reasons uh, being very kind of you know you're like a professional artist already, but you made a decision to go back to art school, so we'll discuss that a little bit later. So, Sai, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Sai Yong Lee. I am uh, originally from South Korea. Um, I, well, I came from a background far away from practicing art. I went to, a, um, I went to research university and then, uh, I didn't have any, I didn't know, I didn't have a passion for doing something at that time, but I saw some of my, some of the recent graduates of the college graduating from some popular majors like business, computer science, and we're not still getting the, having a hard time uh, struggling to find a job. And then that's when I thought, if it's so hard to get a job, even if I study some, some, of, some of those so-called popular majors, then I'll just do what, I, what I've been wanting to do, which was film. And after graduating, I wanted to, um, I wanted to have a work of my own that that expresses myself. Something that because I I've been having this something something uh, keeping the pressure in myself to show something, show something in my own voice, and I thought that could the film could be the medium, and then how, that's how I came to SFI. Very good. Uh, so you can kind of see here that what, what I find very interesting about my two students is one's coming to school has done a lot of artwork, uh, professional artwork, but coming back to school to, to try things, to reinvent herself, or maybe to, she'll explain, but to explore other mediums. And another student, you know, was doing what's considered not artistic, even though it is, I think there's a creative process in everything you do, including business, okay. uh, but, but decided that, you know, really wanted to tap into an art form. Uh, and film was the one he was interested in. And so we'll discuss that, like how a lot of people that don't think they're artists go to an art school and discover all this incredible stuff inside themselves. And Cy was definitely <clears throat> one of those students of mine. So Colette, um, we're gonna put up a link down below of some of your, your work before you, <clears throat> gosh, sorry. We're gonna put up some of your uh, work before you came to the Art Institute and there's gonna be a link down below, but talk about, now the actual art you did before coming to the Art Institute and what, the, what our viewers might see 
uh, and why you picked the particular piece for them to see? Well, uh, before I came here, I was, um, I, I'm, okay, so I'm predominantly, or I was predominantly a painter. And, but I, a few years ago, I started introducing photography into my work. And I liked the different aspects and the different languages and they played against, um, you know, like one another. And then what happened a few years ago, I did um, an exhibition on the writer Anais Nin, who has been a big, big influence on me. And um, when I put this show on, um, friends of mine, um, we all did, well, friends and me decided we'd put the, do like a, a video uh, based um, on Annie's name, but all introducing all our um, languages, our art languages, which was performance, music, um, acting, poetry, and film. And it was called, uh, the video was called, um, I was in love, I still am. And it's based on one of my poems. And <clears throat> we'll have a link down below that they can see this work before you came to art school. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, uh, and I, I'd like to say that I'm going to interject here that what you remind me of is something my dad, the professor, August Coco, taught me was the, the circus of the mind, you know, but it's like the artistic circus of the mind and juggling all these different mediums with the same poetry. I, I like to call it the equal art synthesis. So you are definitely like a Renaissance woman and you were doing that before coming to art school. Yes, that's, that's, that's right. Um, but what I really got out of, out of it was, um, the collaboration of working with different, you know, different artists and, and what you bring together to the table, which was very exciting. And, um, and also they inspired me to, to A, to go back to college, but also to, and to ex expand my language because I'd seen so much in what they did that I was like, you know what, I can do film. I'll have a go at film. I'll have a go at performance. And so I do actually have a lot um, them to thank for kind of pushing me in that direction, even though I know it, it was going there, mm -hmm. but that really, they helped a lot. Doing yeah. the video helped a lot. You know, the idea of, of artists working solo, it's, you know, I have great respect for that. Um, I did that a little bit when I wrote music, but I always got lonely. <laughs> so when I work with a bunch of different artists, you know, I, I felt really energized. And that meant like, you know, an orchestra and on some filmmaking is working with a bunch of people. So even though you were going that way, maybe there was something about your nature that also really enjoyed working with other people, which is, I think, because you're very open, you know, you're the open artist. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like people sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I do, uh, I do like collaboration. So I, uh, when you first came to uh, the art Institute, uh, you showed me something. It was like a, a long form film. I, I remember it had some kind of, hopefully I'm right here. It's been a while, but it had some kind of like superhero thing going on. Is that you? Well, there was another student actually. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago, 2014. I, my brain is crazy. But 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 okay, fill me in. Talk about uh, what you made before you came to the art institute, and remind me. Uh, you know what was the piece you showed to get into the art institute? Uh, it was a. Uh, well, you were right about the long form film. I was going for the long form film. Um, it was. A film about well, I remember that you really hated it because because well, I, I, hate's a strong <laughs> word. I never say hate. I'm, I'm constructive. <laughs> but what did I not like about it? I I received the hardest critique <laughs> ever had in SFI. No, not from me. <laughs> not from me. Come on, that's not true. I'm not like that. I, I, I would say you've missed opportunities. You have a lot of fat in your film. Cut the fat out. Go with the essentials, but no, no. I mean, you know, the fact that you even made a film is 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 uh, you know, incredible. It's not easy. So okay, go back. I'm a mean guy, right? I'm a mean guy. Okay. 
<laughs> so I, I actually saw what you meant after your critique. It was not something sincere. It was very different from what I began to work in SFAI. It was not, it was, it didn't have, well, it was, it didn't have, have the less kind of personal meanings in it. It was more about putting two different characters that really has nothing to do with my own reflection uh, happening outside. It was it was it was about um it was about um a uh, prostitute and a concierge. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I don't remember. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, it was very different from what I started to working on based on your uh, based on your feedbacks. Um, yep. Yeah. I mean. Um, I, 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 what I was interested in is yes, personal, personal. You said no, but personal cinema, your personal vision. Because if I've seen something in a movie that I've seen before, like there were a lot of students coming that they looked like they were doing Tarantino at an art school. They well, why do I want to see that? You know, he already exists. I want to see you. So I think part of it was when you talk about you know your vision, it wasn't really being translated in what we saw. And I knew that your vision was very, you know, articulate and, and this was a new medium for you. So I remember it was more about that and that, and everything you did afterward was totally you. I mean, you really blossomed in, 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 in your filmmaking. It was very organic, very sincere, you know, and, uh, and, and it had symbols, you know, the symbols themselves uh, said a lot. And that's partly going to an art school is you learn to understand you know, symbols, symbols in painting, sculpture, and, and, and that also helps you as a filmmaker because you could go to any film school, right? Film school for, you know, learning the skill sets, learn how to do things that you're supposed to do, or you go to an art school where you kind of break yourself and, you, you know, break it and rebuild, deconstruct, rebuild. So I, I think it's, you were one of those students that I had that really embraced that and there was a lot of growth in your work. And you're also very skilled you know, as a film, you know, technician, you learn everything about cinematography, editing, sound, and you really embrace that. So there's that aspect to it too. Uh, Colette, um, you, I mean, yeah, I guess I, we're doing a directed study together. Can I be a little mean on you too? I, you know, I mean, it might be- Why not? <laughs> Why not? I don't know what mean and, hate, mean and hate exactly means, Sai, uh, but I, it's a side of myself I should be aware of. But Colette, uh, has that ever, you know, what do you think about critiques at the Orange Institute in general? Because you're putting yourself out there, you know, and you want to get the feedback. But what, what do you think about that whole process? Oh, I think it's essential. It's absolutely essential. You know, like having been out in the world, you know, the, what you get, it, it sets you up. It sets you up. And if it means sometimes people are extra tough, you know, it's only because they've got your back. When you're at school, you're in a safe environment. So therefore, you know, they people want to push you and push you because you're safe. But once you get out into the world, it's a totally different ball game oh, completely, yeah. Yeah. you know, and, you know, um, so I, I actually think the critiques are incredibly important. No, you're not always going to like what somebody says, you know, but I remember um, something Tony Labatt said to me early on and well he was addressing the whole class and i thought it was really interesting and he said in crits he said you might get into fights so to speak he said but he said you don't take it personal he said and then what you do is you go to the bar or the pub after and have a drink yeah. and everything's fine and i thought that was brilliant i really really liked that and should I ever kind of like go and teach? I'm going to say the same thing because that was really good advice. Well, let, let, let's talk about that. But Sai, uh, I want you to have a link, you know, of this film that you had before. So they, you know, just a section of it. And, you know, maybe a section that we talked about a little bit, that, that, would, be, that would be interesting for people tuning in, especially when we start talking about 
the current work you're doing. Um, let, let, let's go uh, back to you, Colette. Um, you, uh, you have a desire to also teach. Uh, and uh, part of the reason why it's, it's good to go to art school is to learn how to you know, run a classroom and learn how to inspire. You know, I call that create sparks for the students. Um, has that happened at, at SFAI? I mean, have you felt like, it was, I mean, there's a wide variety of classes and teachers, but do you like sometimes, you know, respond to certain, you know, classes more than others? I mean, things like that. I, not that all the classes aren't, you know, perfect, uh, but there are some classes that maybe as an individual artist that you feel are more tailored to what you do, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, there is. Um, I think um, I'm thinking, I mean, I've loved every class that I've been in, everybody. I've loved every single minute of it. But my, um, I like the classes where it's been more experimenting and, and pushed. So for example, your class, um, but also new genres and um, and then a couple of individual uh, tutors like um, Jeremy Morgan, who was kind of fundamental in yeah. pushing my um, my ideas, my philosophies. Um, so I think more experimental. Um, the more exp yeah yeah. And I saw so uh, same for you. Like, what what resonated? What classes resonated for what you were looking for? Um, I remember the history of now class that I took with you, Professor Gopla. Um, because that's the class. That was the class that I re actually realized that art would be something not about putting what's inside of me out, but it's also about a medium that can connect two different cultures without language, even though we don't speak the same language, we grew up in a different background, but it's something that we could, we could connect each other like a bridge. Um, we, I was making a, well, every, every student from SFAI and then the Batumi Art, uh, Batumi Art University, Georgia, were making like three minute self portraits. And then, and then in, in the context of the pandemic, it was the pandemic has just started at the time. So I was very angry about the pandemic, how it kind of stopped everything that I was doing at school and outside of school. And then and then I just wanted to show the anger in that three minute piece. Uh, and that's when I showed it during the class, it, I was surprised to see that how everyone could relate to the feelings. Regardless of not being able to speak the language, that is something about art as being the great communicator. And it's not just in the brain, it's in the heart. You know, and the heart often is more of a communicator. They can feel it. Um, Colette, why don't you tell us a little bit about your style that you have been developing or, or how it's changing in terms of your style of your, your paintings uh, and film work by going to uh, the San Francisco Art Institute? Well, as I said, it's gone. It's got a lot more, a lot more um, experimental, and um, you know, it's kind of changed. Um, it, it, I, I, I think, yeah, I think experimental more than anything, to be honest, because a lot of my ideas were there, um, but now I'm quite confident in this. Um, about leaving college and exploring those ideas further. I mean, I walked into SFAI, a painter. I walk, I'm walking out, I'm making films, I'm doing performances. And so that in itself is incredible. Connected. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I don't really use the word experimental or narrative or I think everything has experimentation in it. Everything has narrative in it. I think for me, the best works have both because it creates an energy and you, you have that energy. And when you bring that, you know, it starts with the poem. I always say an idea, which you have clearly. And then, you know, everything with that idea resonates, you know, the film, the painting, 
you're doing some incredible stuff with sound now. You're experimenting with sound. You really like it. You know, it opens up yeah. this whole other world about, like I say, being able to see music and sound and hear, you know, film and visuals. Uh, same for you, um, Cy. How, how has uh, the school, in terms of your style, which, you know, is more narrative, but, you, but in, in the sense that it's clearly trying to tell a story, um, uh, at, but now being at the arts and you're doing a lot of different things too. How, how is it, you know, changed the way you, your process is, your, your thumbprint, so to speak? Well, I did, I, uh, I practiced many different forms in SFAI, uh, including film, uh, short film, experimental film, documentaries, and also, uh, installation videos and, um, and uh, by doing a lot of, by, by experiencing a lot of mediums, uh, it's it's just a it's just a difference between just a difference of how you present. It's all start from um, all start from how I'm feeling, and I'm why choosing what I'm going to show to the public, and then in that way, in that way. Uh, this could be the practice. The art practice could be a uh, could be uh, my weapon to to engage in a engage in a discourse to the society or anything that I would like to connect to. I, I like the idea of art as weapon. It's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. There's a there's a, a book of five rings Miyamoto Musashi. I used to fence uh, for twelve years. I was a, a a saber and foil fencer, but I. I study the book, uh, uh, the Book of Five Rings, and it's really about the poetry and the art of fencing, uh, and how it becomes to a degree where you don't have to kill. You just people know your artistry that they're not going to misbehave <laughs> around okay. you. So there's something about about that, like you know, we get it. This guy's got it. He's raw. He has his energy. We're not going to. We're just going to listen. We're just going to watch. You know. It, it, it forces your viewer to you know, have to look. And there's something about it. that's what I call energy. You know, I mean, a lot of artists forget in, in, that you have an audience, right? You have people looking at your work. You can put it in the attic and just you look at it. And there's something to be said for that. You know, it's kind of a picture in Dorian Gray kind of thing. You can see yourself changing in the mirror of art. But, um, but there's also an audience. And so what do you want them to leave with? You know, what do you want to make very clear in their minds about who you are uh, and how you are part of this bigger picture of all of us? So both of you have been doing that. You know, that's very much, you know, what I am really into. And the older I get, I, I am always thinking about what I'm putting out in the world because I've done so much stuff with young kids and film and underserved and, um, and I really like to give them the opportunity to use the equipment to tell their stories because everybody has that story to tell. And when you go to art school, you develop even more skills, but you develop your creative thumbprint. I could have gone to a regular film school. I obviously had lots of possibilities with that, but I, I wanted to go to the art school because I wanted to try things. I wanted to do, like I said, you know, hear uh, film and see music. I wanted to try other mediums and kind of expand my philosophical, you know, um, artistic way of looking at things. So I, it's the school is excellent for that. It's excellent yeah. for helping you develop your own creative thumbprint. And it's good that you realize how important it is to have that dialogue with your, your audience, uh, regardless if it's a painting. Um, so I like to talk about that in the, in, the, in the grad program. But one of the really interesting things is that I, now that I'm in, in charge of projects, special projects, I'm very interested in, in bringing people of all walks of life, different schools, great literature to work together. You know, we've been doing it online, which has been very successful. Harwin is a huge time difference, but uh, with these ideas like the history of now, uh, Don Quixote, uh, taking these things and sharing footage. And like you said, Sai, the idea that you don't have to speak the language, the culture and the creativity is enough to communicate. And we'll put some uh, links to some of the work you did in the history of now, uh, so they can see that with your filmmaking partner at the Bautomi Art University. And Colette, you've been, you know, really involved with this 
first idea of Don Quixote taking a great piece of literature, having incredible professors and experts from Spain talk about the book, uh, you know, who Cervantes was, what the culture was like, you know, what does the book mean as the first modern novel? And then we tailor it to a, a film, you know, in, that, we, that we like and make it personal. And then you also, you also came up with the idea, but I'm going to let you explain it. What does a living palette mean? I, I love that when you said, uh, Professor Coppola, we're kind of like your living palette because I learned so much from you guys, right? And, and uh, you make me a better artist just by hearing you and seeing your work. So what does that mean, living palette? Well, I, early on, when we were kind of like putting things together and throwing ideas around last semester, um, it occurred to me that um, it was like you, I hate saying like, but yeah, right. you. Well, it was not sweet. I hate that word. Oh, sweet. I have a real problem with that word. So <laughs> I like neat. Well, that's neat, Professor Grover, but not sweet. No, I don't like sweet. Um, but you are the director and I equated the director to the painter. Okay. Here we are, the painter and all these ideas and all these colors that you put on a, a canvas, those that's your palette. So I equated that um, to all, everybody that was in the class giving ideas out, you know, um, have you tried this? Uh, look at this, look at that way. Um, that to me is a living palette because you are um, influencing somewhere along the way, the director, the painter. And so that was, well, yeah, that was also, also something even more specific. That's all true. But I'm having my students, both these the composers from the University of Redlands and my visualists from the San Francisco Art Institute, make these dreams that are a minute and a half each that are going to go in my professional film. Very important, important pieces. If you were doing it as just you and the film, you would, these are big time, even the composer said, God, why am I not getting to do this? You know, it's, it's a big deal. Yeah. And in, in, the, uh, in the book, Cervantes, he uses novellas to kind of shift things around. So I look at these dreams like that, but they're all very important dreams to add a, a lens to what's going on to our characters. And so I look at that as a living palette, like you're on my palette and you guys are yes. doing these dreams and I'm going to give you some notes, but they're yours. So they're montages. And, and and like I said, you know, the professionals are handing the story, a filmic story over to you as my students and artists. And then you take it and it, you, you make sure you have everything in the mind that we talked about. And then you give it back and we hand it back and the film goes. And so that, that was, when you called that a living pile, it, it just made complete sense to me. And what better way for me to be both an educator and a so-called entertainer by, you know, I have my students' films in my work, which is my work, right? I mean, this is my film, but yes. you're in it with your creativity. Now, having said that, um, so you've worked with me professionally and you've done a lot of stuff after school, but even during school, I like to have students work on my stuff. Uh, what's that like? What's the learning experience with that? And am I scary on the set? Maybe? I mean, I don't know. I mean, you, you have a different perspective of me. I know. <laughs> That could be very scary, you know. Who knows? But Sai, what 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 is different from actually being out in the field and watching it and students working with me or being in the classroom? It's a, you know, I'm just curious what you have to say about that. As Colette said in the beginning, it's uh, completely a different experience being a student and a, and a, somebody who's trying to be a professional after graduating from school. Um, when I was in when I was uh, when I was uh, in your class as a student, I could just all I did was just focus on what I'm going to do in order to um, in order to have the result in this class. Let's say the assignments, yeah. Yes, like assignments or um, what do I want to get from this course? Like meeting meeting with colleagues who can possibly collaborate or what kind of work that I want to 
do in this class. But after um, being in your being in your uh, team again as somebody who's working as a sound designer, um, it's it's more like a, I see I see myself more like a team worker now that I, that I have a certain task that I'm responsible to, mm -hmm. and then everyone every team member has their responsibilities. So uh, mm -hmm. in some sense, I feel more uh, relieved. I say more. Um, I don't have the pressure of having a finished work by my own, by at my own strength. But also at the same time, um, I have a feeling that I want to do more. I want to contribute more. I can I can do something more. But I'm right now. I'm just trying to stay stay calm as possible to focus on focus on um, what I'm taking as a team. Yeah. No. And you're you're one of those team players and crew that makes me feel happy on the set. There's something about your personality, you know, that things kind of lighten up. You're, you know, and you have all these different kinds of personalities, but if you're a director out there, <laughs> science got that personality that, that uh, makes everything seem okay. And, and that's, a, that's a talent. Uh, yeah. Well, let you have some of that too going on. So those are things that you cultivate that, cause it, you're not, you know, you're team players. Right. Sometimes a team player is not much of a team player. Um, usually that's the director, but the director has to have some, you know, control for all the art forms to work together. But anyhow, um, one last thing before we kind of close this up. Um, the idea of a directed study. Uh, I don't did I do one with you, Sai? I can't remember. I don't think so. But I'm definitely, I've done a lot with students. It's one-on-one -on -one with uh, your, your professor and I'm doing one right now with Colette. And uh, when you look below, I'm hoping to have her dream uh, that she is putting, I'm putting in my movie that you can see. And also that what we're, she's making in her uh, directed study or a piece of it that is very, very personal to her. And that I feel very responsible um, to, my student and our fellow artists that I, you know, I have to get in there. I have to understand. I make tons of suggestions, but I, you have to be understanding of how personal this is and kind of take a step back, but also get excited about it. So Colette, talk a little bit about, you know, the directed study, you know, uh, way of things are done at the San Francisco Art Institute. I'm sure every professor has their own way of doing it, but, you know, maybe fill us in a little bit about what you've been getting out of making this film uh, oh, one last thing. And the film is really on two levels. One, it's a document of what she really wants it to be eventually, which is an installation performance piece with music and have it interactive with the audience actually there. But she can't because of COVID. So she's looking at it also now just as a film. Though later on, she'll do the installation. But I said, well, if it's a film, it's a film right now. And mm -hmm. so there's cinema syntax or things that you have to honor uh, just in terms of making it a film. And so that's kind of what we're talking about now. But go ahead, Cole, a little bit about this personal project and what it's like to have a one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, directed study. Well, it's, uh, first of all, uh, the one-on-one -on -one is very um, valuable because um, when you're trying to build up any kind of like artwork, film or whatever, it's like, it, you're very vulnerable you're very vulnerable. It doesn't matter whether it's a personal film or, you know, it's experimenting. You're vulnerable because it's just, it's you and your ideas. And so I think um, a, a professor has to have a sense of that and understand. And you do, you do. And right from the beginning, you were, you kind of, when I, when I said that I want to do this uh, film, based on my relationship with my mom, you, you taught me and you were very sensitive and very understanding and you let me, you let me be then. And it isn't just a case of let, letting me be and I'll come up with some ideas. It was like you allowed me the time to swim in deep waters. Yes. That's what it was. And then when I started coming up for air, I was still a bit kind of, you know the subject matter and i was still a bit nervous but like now 
um, because of the, the, the way that you teach, I am firing. I, the, the last critique that we had, well, you know, the direct stood, I couldn't stop talking. I mean, I know that's nothing unusual, but well, you let me talk. <laughs> you just let me, usually you two talk and you would just go, go for it, Colette, go, go. Well, no, and, I'm interested in this too. Um, like you said, I mean, sometimes you talking with me, your director said, I've given you all these ideas and it's rather fills up the brain and exhaust you. And I always feel a little bad about that afterwards. So you just told me to back off, but I do give you little assignments that I want you to do for your piece. To see yeah, you if, do. You know, one of them was you have to do two sound effects here, bring in sound effects to like get memory, build up the memories you're having. The other mm -hmm. one was let the VO kind of go down and, you know, visit the phone conversation. So it's not always up here. It kind of goes down and comes back up and you were, you know, these are not easy things to do, but it was, I was hoping that those little things might open up some ideas for you. And, and they really did. I mean, they work what you did. And, uh, but again, that's part of it. You know, like you can, you can use a directed study to have, you know, a professor give you these little assignments, but they have to, they have to think this could work, you know, and not, yes. not waste yes. time. Uh, yes. Not that any professor does that, but but it's important as a teacher to say, okay. And it's important for a student to say, let me try it. You know, I, I think I, I'm unsure about what you're saying. or I'm unsure, but, you know, you said do it. I'll do it, you know. Yeah. And you did. And it actually works really well. I mean, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it does. I mean, I... You know, um, I, I was stuck on the sound and I knew it was like something's got to give here and I didn't know. And then you, you said, try these different sounds. And I was like, I don't know. I don't. And then I did. And it just went, it clicked into place. So maybe the link below, we just do the first act or what, what you want. But I think it's good to show how with a directed study with your teacher giving you these little assignments uh, might you might do like a before and after but again it's up to you what you want to do but these these links are really kind of show growth in terms of what it means to be an sfai member of the community and mm -hmm. how if you really take advantage of it how much it it, it helps you blossom because it did me it did me for sure uh, going to the school uh, even though, I mean, I had George Kuchar as my teacher and he's a whole nother ball of wax. So I do make, I did make a lot of drive-in rubber monster movies and genres because that's more George. But, you know, I do also do, um, you know, po you know, poetic, you know, yeah. these terms, serious movies. No, there's seriousness even in drive-in movies. There's artistry in drive-in movies. But anyway, I just wanted to say that. Um, and then lastly, now let's just talk about art today, you know, I mean, uh, uh, Sai, you already said a little bit about it, the weapon, art as a weapon, but why it's important to go to art school, you know, because you, you can do anything, you can create films outside of art school. I mean, even, you know, certain members of my family said, well, why are you going to film school? You know, you could just be making films. Well, I don't look at it that way. I look at it, I have my peers, you know, my, my brothers and sisters making things and we're sharing ideas. I can fail and not be, and I will be criticized, but it's not gonna hurt my career, you know? Uh, and I can go say, well, why is this not working? You know, when you're doing something, you know, that's quick you, and you don't have money for it, film, film does cost a lot of money. You often don't have that luxury, you know? And so for me, even hearing a painter tell me, a student tell me like, well, you know, I don't know, it seemed like the colors, that means it's priceless as a student. Um, so wh what about that in terms of art, you know, um, uh, going to art school or not going to art school, just in terms of that. Then I have one more question. And Paddock hasn't shut me up yet. So I do talk a lot, but go ahead. <laughs> um, so, sorry, sorry first. Oh yeah. Sorry. What about going to, uh, going, uh, to art school and not just going right out and getting your iPhone and your iMovie editing software and just make a movie, right? but you decided to go to an art school and go on the film program. I thought of it when I first came to SF, uh, art school, or SFAI, I thought of it as, as an opportunity to just 
as uh, as you said, it, it could be a safe cushion. Could fail. I could fail as big as I could. I could try as much as I could. Because because uh, SFAI was like a laboratory that has everything inside that I could do it. Laboratory so, that has everything inside it. That's great. It is yeah. definitely. That's that's exactly what it is. And it's a laboratory that doesn't have all the bells and whistles in film. But you don't need all the best bells and whistles. You just need some of the bells and whistles because it's your eye, your ears, your mind, you know, that use. I always say pity the artist that blames their paintbrush, right? Or pity the filmmaker that blames the camera because it's up here. It's up here, right? And, you, and, and, and that's where it starts. So whether or not you have the most fancy camera, $500,000 camera, yeah, there's things it can do maybe that an iPhone can't do, but you can make an iPhone do a ton if you got it up here, right? So that's a perfect way of saying it's the lab. We have celluloid you can make. Uh, how to light for film is different than how to light for digital, but still it's exchanging those ideas, trying things, experimenting um, with that. Uh, so I like that. It's a laboratory. To, to test things and, and feel like it's okay to fail in that laboratory. Because sometimes a failure is way better than the non-failure. Yeah. You go like, whoa, you know, you're coming back to it. Like, that actually is pretty brilliant. So Colette, you too, like, you know, uh, what, uh, well, go ahead, Sai. Can I, can I add just one more, something I add to, add to what you just said. It's really up to, the, it's really up to the person who's at the, at the, at the art school trying to, trying to make something out of the time and then the money that he put inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's easy to blame. It's easy to blame. You'll, you get what you put into it. And you know what? Hard work is very necessary. And I always say, respect it. Respect the creative process. If you don't respect it, why the heck are you doing it, right? It's not, a, it's not something that's a hobby, right? You respect it. So anyway, I, I'm pretty much a stickler on that. I get angry when I sense that a student is not respecting it, their process or anybody else's creative process. That's horrible when, a, when somebody doesn't really pay attention to another student and it's not engaged with it. And, uh, you know, that happens in all schools. But anyway, Colette, you, you too about, you know, why did you, I mean, we know why you went back to school to try things, but you didn't have to. <laughs> you didn't no. have to. I mean, you, were always, you could easily do films without going to school, but why, why? Well, I just don't think you never start. You don't. You never stop learning, and um, and I wanted to kind of, you know, you, you talk about like art today. You know, I went. I did my BA a long time ago, so I I also wanted to see what was going on. I wanted to learn from a younger generation, you know, um, and see you know, get their point of view, see what's out there, what they think, because it's in, it's imperative, I think, as an artist to, uh, to forever keep moving. And, and as I put it really kind of eloquently, you know, it's a laboratory. It is, that's what it is. It's, um, and it's amazing. And sometimes you'll blow up the Bunsen burner and go, oh my God, oh my God, you know, uh, but then you come back down and it's okay. Um, and, you know, and also it's like what you put into it, you know, it's very kind of, um, I mean, for me, I knew that I was going to kind of, I wanted not just a hundred percent, I wanted a hundred and ten percent. And I'm like, come on, come on. And everybody encouraged it. And everybody was like, right, Colette, they do it, yeah. go. You know, and that to me is priceless, you know, and that is the school. That's the legacy of the school. And um... things are changing, obviously. Like, how does a school like this evolve into this new future? And it's the old school, new school, but it's helping to develop the voice. You know, in my mind, it helps you develop your personal voice and, sh and work with people with their personal voices and extend mm -hmm. it out uh, into the community, which which I know size worked on and, and, but the idea of like, I mean, the, the last thing, and maybe you can you tell me what this means, but Francis, who you know is my uncle and, and uh, 
you know, he's taught me a few things uh, in, in, you know, growing up, but he just now sent me that, you know, text, which is, is, you know, the job and true purpose of cinema, uh, which is his art form, and it, it combines all art forms, is to help people realize that this is not the only future, they have other futures. What does that mean to you, Colette? Well, that means it kind of, um, you can change. You don't have to accept what is out there. And, you know, you could have three or four different lives before, you know, you finally decide on something. But then at the same time, it, you might not. And I think that is wonderful. I think it's a very human thing. And it's like uh, more like an art sword, though. He's saying the job and the purpose is to do this. If you don't do yeah. it, you're not doing the job and purpose of cinema. And maybe that's what happens as you get older. Like I do think now I really don't want to do rubber monster movies. I mean, it's fun, but I want to put stuff out there that has purpose, right? Mm -hmm. That helps people think, you know, life is special and they have meaning. And the more we're connected, the better off we all will be. So, yes. I mean, I think that's part of this. Like he's saying, well, after my whole life, I'm 85, this is what I know. And I think that applies to a yeah. lot of art forms. So what do you think he means by that? Sorry, can you repeat the question again? Well, he said, <laughs> you know, when I was asking him about certain things uh, uh, that, you know, I, mean, I don't want to get into a lot of the reasons why I was asking, but but he said, you know, the, the, the job and purpose, job and purpose of cinema is to let people know that their future is not just now, they, it's all kinds of other futures and they should be aware of that. Um, I guess it means hope, but oh, go ahead, go ahead. What do you think it means? Um, I think cinema, I think cinema as a, uh, I feel like I keep saying this again, but cinema is part of the art. Is one of the one of the art to, uh, the tool to. Tool to show to to show and connect, and future of cinema. Could should I I believe it should also be about the people about the about the humanity, um, rather than, what's, rather than making money, but. No profit. Making profit is also important, but um, something to something to reveal something that that's in the humanity that's been maybe probably forgotten or under under um, underestimated. Yeah, and and, and uh, it's about I imagination. It's about dreaming. It's about sitting like wherever, whether it's at home or in a big. I prefer a big cinema. But it's being, eng uh, you know, engulfed and like and letting your imagination. I, I agree with all of that, but I have a life thing that kind of says it all to me, and it's one of the most things I'm most proud of of what I've done and, and left in the world. I travel the world and I bring you know digital filmmaking equipment to empower the underserved uh, because they have stories to tell. And I remember this little kid in Belize and Punta Gorda, you know, had nothing, you know, and uh, participated. And, you know, everybody's treated like, you know, you're a human, you're part of it all. Right? You know, you, you're not just some poor kid, you know, that is begging, you know. And uh, I gave him the stuff and, and he made this beautiful little film. It was just from his heart, you know, and, and he came up to me and he said, you know, Mr. Coppola, thank you. I didn't know I was an artist. I didn't know that. My, my future, probably in my mind, was going to be living in Punta Gorda forever, maybe having to beg. But now with art and cinema, I realize I can create other futures. And I think that is sense of uh, film and cinema, uh, even when it's big, when it's big, <laughs> You know, uh, it, it has, if it's organic and sincere, it has that power. And I think that's what he also means, a sense yes. of hope, that it doesn't have to be the way it is. And cinema can help with that. Oh, to yeah, yeah, totally. Well, anyhow, totally. we're going to have some links below. 
Uh, it's been a real pleasure talking to uh, uh, you, Colette, somebody I'm working with right now. We, you know we're under the gun, so things are crazy. And uh, Cy, you're working on this as more of a professional, and I'm happy to have you on the team. So anyhow, uh, I think we're done here. We're, we, you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed it. And let's just say I did. Uh, all right. Good. We'll talk soon, guys. See you, okay. see you at the set. All right. Okay. Bye.